Hello, all you beautiful wedges of 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 Stilton cheese, of uh, of of American craft singles. All you all you beautifully wrapped wheels of Baby Bell. All you shredded bags of Wisconsin sharp cheddar. I hope that you're having an excellent day. Look, it's coffee. And I am happy to have been able to make a little run from Durham, North Carolina to Creedmoor, North Carolina. Just a short, short trip, about 20 minutes north. And I want to show you what I got in Creedmoor. We're going to let that coffee hang out for a minute. Okay. Come. Hopefully you'll get glimpses of Fizby and Atlas. Two wonderful dogs that we love very much. It's an amp. I bought an amp, which is surprising. Uh, I bought a, I don't know what year yet because I haven't looked, Music Man 112 RD50. It's a one by 12 combo, probably from the 1970s, the decade where all, from which all good things come. <clears throat> and uh, it is supposed to be 50 watts running through two 6L6s. There's one 12AX7 in here as well. I can only imagine that that is driving the uh, reverb. And you can see we've got like that music man, but then behind it, we've got an HD, sorry, uh, an HD 130 reverb head. And I didn't know exact, I didn't know too much about the 112 RD. It was just 20 minutes away and it was, um, and it was a good, it was, it, it was a buy that made a lot of sense. So I kind of just figured, looking at the layout, that I was dealing with a, like, a dry side, right? It's a two-channel amp. I thought I was going to have, like, my clean, my clean and dry channel, and then my little reverb channel. Lo and behold, well, if, if that was the case, if I had, uh, if I had a dry and then a reverb channel over here, it would have been mirroring, pretty much, how the HD-130 is set up. That has got a, uh, a, a clean, not clean, but just like unaffected dry channel on the left, and then a reverb and tremolo channel on the right. A lot like the Fender Silver Face amps of the era would have been set up. We're having a visit by from Thisbe right now, who, who knows, who knows what what she thinks she has found. Um, I just assumed that this was going to be set up the same way. Cool news, it's not set up the same way. It's set up a different way. You only have one input, which I didn't really notice. Here's what I liked about the amp when I saw it. I liked that we had all the corners. I liked that we had both badges. I liked that you can see we've got two back panels and the speaker is really the, was like the big selling point for me. So you get here and like you're plugging it in there i was in the basement of in the basement of a house in creedmoor and i realized that this amp is built completely differently than um than what i expected and it's in some ways depending on your use case a better setup than the larger hd 130. so we've got you've got a bright switch here bright and normal you don't have a uh, a deep switch like you do on the HD one hundred and thirty. 
um, single input, volume, treble, and bass that matches the control set on the uh, um, on the HD one thirty. And I'm pretty sure like the HD sixty fives and seventy fives. I think they're all the same too. Um, and then here we've got clean and limiter. Well, that's fucking rad. What does that mean? And we've got the original foot switch. And this foot switch also has a light indicator. We'll get into that later. Or rather, not get into it, but just like learn what the fuck is happening later. Um, with limiter here and... Uh, or with reverb here on this foot switch, and then on here, this foot switch, it reads distort. Well, that's fucking cool and different. On this switch, you've actually got limiter to the right for this bank of knobs, and then clean to the left on this bank of knobs. This is a, this is like, it's a, how should I describe it? It's like a two channel, I mean, it's like a proper two channel distortion amp, uh, as far as I can tell. Click it down here to clean side, and this is your control set. Your reverb is a master control for both your clean and dirty side. Click it over to limiter, and all of a sudden, this is your, uh, this is like your overall output volume, and then you've got a separate gain pot here that is basically your distortion or like your, your preamp volume. Um, we did a quick, quick little run through in this dude's basement. Um, I don't know, man, he's, he's a nice enough dude. Sometimes, I mean, I'm glad I bought the amp from him. Uh, but I'm not looking forward to, like, I didn't make a friend for life. Um, one thing I kind of, like, I don't search out, like, I don't prefer amps that smell like smoke, but I don't shy away from them. And if you do, if it really bugs you, it's like, I guess that's your business, but. Oh, gross. This isn't gonna be like a big long thing. I just wanna plug into both channels, mess with the controls so I really know what's going on and that my guesses are correct. See if the foot switch works. Um, and let y'all hear it while all that happens. Um, I'm playing my Stratocaster the Stratocaster is from the late, mid 1980s. It's a Japanese Squire with an E serial number. And. And we'll start off on the. channel so just the reverb control on the far right and then this volume treble and bass controls are the, I think the only okay okay I think we've got two controls that are master controls this volume pot right here and then the reverb treble and bass Okay, okay. 
Okay, so the foot switch does work. And even though I'm set to clean on the amp panel, the light up top, well, you can't really see it shining, but it's on, is on the story. control like I just said and the only volume control because we're on the clean channel is right here to uh, like crank it was because the speaker, the surprise speaker um, in here is worth a shit ton of money. So I, and I didn't check out the cone condition on the front. It looked awesome from the back. Um, but uh, I knew that even if it needed a recone or whatever, I was picking it up for a price where that wasn't gonna hurt me. And so, all right, bouncing over to looks like, or so now we're on the, what they call the limiter channel or distort channel. From here, you got your volume, post, basically post, uh, power amp volume, preamp volume, gain is set to zero. And a cool thing about, I thought that I liked, even though it was just a brief little section when I was cranked at the volume on seven here, is that it was kind of clean, but it was really wanting to sustain. And you gotta, like, it, it wasn't all the way clean, it was still breaking up. Um, you, I could hear the tubes. Uh, this is looking like at the same volume section with the preamp control there. I don't have quite as much. Uh.
Volume's backed off to three. Preamp gain at seven. <laughs> this may not know that Music Man amps are called hybrid amplifiers. Pretty much every amp is sectioned off into two parts. You've got your preamp, that's what takes your instrument or whatever you're putting into the amplifier and makes it sound nice. And then you've got your power amp. Preamp first, then your power amp, and your power takes that nice sound that the preamp made nice. And the power amp powers it up and makes it loud. And then both of those two pieces working together let you play. Look, you you are you are turning your your brain waves into sound waves through your fingers and through uh, a little bit of electricity. How neat! Amplifiers are so cool. Um. So, what does it mean when I say uh, a hybrid amplifier? In general, very generally, amplifiers are, or guitar amplifiers, are uh, fall into two classifications. Solid state or tube. Um, or valve, if you are, uh, if you are um, intercontinental. And, uh, well, and this is just like a, a long pause because it's a, it's a, it's a very, it's a long conversation. So basically, are you using little tiny vacuum tubes to help make the sound or are you using, um, are you using, uh, little transistors and other sort of non-tube components to make sound work? And, um, and a, a solid state amp would have a solid state preamp and a solid state power amp. A tube amp usually indicates that you've got a tube preamp and a tube power amp. A hybrid amplifier is telling you that you've got uh, a mix. One or the other of those two pieces are tube and then the other is solid state. Doesn't matter which one's which, if you've got a mix of both in one amplifier, it's a hybrid amp. The um, uh, the Music Man amps have a solid state preamp and a tube power section, tube power amp. A notable, sort of notable, like still under the radar, still cheap if they pop up, um, amplifier company uh, that flip flop that is called Legend. They've got a tube preamp and a solid state power amp. Um, you see tube preamps matched with solid state power amps really often in the uh, in the bass world. Um, Christ, we're already at 20 minutes. Anyway.
solid state power, solid state preamps, um, uh, occasionally get like a little bit of a, <laughs> um, from folks and, uh, the music band amps are increasing in value, but a lot of things from the seventies are increasing from val in value. And, uh, and they're often regarded as having great clean tones. People love them as clean amps, like a good alternative to a Fender Twin or a good yada, yada, yada. And the cleans are fucking red. But the distortion on Music Man amps makes me so happy. It is not for everybody, and it is a good deal different than, um, than on some other amps. But... That's just why I like it so much. Uh, solid state... Um, or this particular solid state preamp has a certain like almost plasticky quality to it. Uh, reminds me a little bit of um, of just diamond a channel strip on a on a mixer or on a tape machine. It's uh, it's like responsive and dynamic uh, to your playing for sure. Um, but when it's blown out, it's blown out in a way that I find like satisfying and garagey and stuff. Man. I just... This amp because I have a I have a golem of a golem like lust for <sighs> I 
I'll show you. Oh, I have a, I'm turning everything so you can see it better in the light. I have a Gollum-esque lust. Mm. Oh, for uh, orange frame, not even orange frame, just for old Fender JBLs. And there's, look, there is one. It's right there. It's so, oh, it's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see you, Fender JBL model D120F. Mm. Eight ohms, just like all my other ones. This now makes five JBLs for me. No, that makes five 12 inch JBLs for me. We got two 15 inch D140s. This is tight. This is so tight. All the original screws are here. Cabinet's in great shape. I bought it. I, I bought it. Here's why I bought it. I bought it because I wanted that JBL. And I was paying for that JBL. What a JBL. I was paying for the whole amp what that JBL should cost. It was handling bass fun. It was handling volume fun. I, I expect to be able to take the grill cloth off in a minute and you know what let's do that now um and i think that i'm gonna find a cone that is in perfect fucking shape but you might as well i mean we're already in for a penny in for a pound this video is already long as fuck let's see how this cone looks it sounds like it should look great and the back of the cone where it is meeting the frame is also it looks great um, I also, just from the basement that this thing was in, yeah, okay, sorry, sorry, I'm not going to take off the thing, I'm not going to take off the grill cloth now, um, these corner pieces need to come off for me to get the whole frame out, and I don't have enough extemporaneous words left in me to sit through undoing these screws. Uh, so I'm going to bail and I'll do that later. Um, but just playing it, but just playing it for you now. It's like, God, do I need to find a way to keep this and get rid of something else? I don't have enough. Uh, I don't have enough dimes in the coffer right now to, uh, to not sell something off. So that is what it is. But gosh, this is a good sounding amp and the speaker is, it's just look, something to think about. Something to think about. And what are we doing if not thinking every single second of our lives? It's just, it's just like, like it's what we're, it's what we're built to do as the most advanced member of the primates I just hope that you're able to do something today for yourself that brings you a little bit of happiness. Uh, this was a nice surprise on mine. I look forward to showing it to you more later on. I have more than 30 subscribers now, you beautiful shitheads. And if you want to add your name to that list, press subscribe. And, uh, and I can't wait to... to to talk to all of you more. In a previous video, I made some mention of like doing a better job in the video descriptions with like linking to things that I care about creatively. I haven't done that yet. And uh, I will when I can. I do these videos in like the little, in, like the little coughs of time that I have in my day when there's, uh, when there's not a two year old in the house. Um, and, uh, and, and this is how I can fit it in my life by doing one shot videos with no audio and with no editing. And look, lives change every day. Who knows what the future holds? We're so happy to have you. Um, additionally, I would say that your lucky numbers for the day are four, three, uh, 16, and zero. Um, and, uh, 
uh, the set of keys that you can't find are behind the couch.